After making a seven-player deal with Toronto on Wednesday afternoon, the Boston Celtics came out aggressively against the Vancouver Grizzlies that night. And a little jumper, and right there is Andrew DeClerc. Dana Barros was the star of the game as he controlled the tempo from both the inside and the outside with a season-high 29 points. Dana Barros, a big said. three, a big, <laughs> bang, boom, Barros. Tonight, the Celtics have to face the team with the best record in the NBA, the Seattle Supersonics. Last month, the Sonics shot 60% from the field en route to a victory in Boston. The glove, Gary Payton continues to lead the Sonics to what they hope is their first championship in 19 years. And with newly acquired Vin Baker providing more consistent play down low, the Sonics have strength both inside and outside. Rick Pitino has his hands full tonight, but the attitude of the Celtics all season has been not to give up for the entire 48 minutes. Welcome to the Key Arena in Seattle, Washington, where tonight the Celtics take on the Seattle Supersonics. Hi, everybody. I'm Tommy Heinsohn, and once again, I'll be working with my partner, Bob Cousy. And Coos, Celts made the trade, got Kenny Anderson. What will Kenny Anderson bring to the ball club? Hopefully a great deal. The uh, football teams need quarterbacks. Basketball teams need point guards. Uh, I think another piece of the puzzle is in place. It allows the coach to uh, to implement a, a transition component that has been to some degree lacking this year. And if Kenny lives up to these numbers here, it also gives us a player who perhaps is going to make everyone a little bit better. And that's what a good point guard does. He elevates everyone's shooting percentage. Why? Because he creates better shooting opportunities for them. Kenny Anderson can do this. Uh, Hopefully, this is what he's going to provide the seas to. Rick Pitino had these thoughts on Kenny Anderson. Kenny Anderson, the main thing is that if he has great enthusiasm for the game of basketball, I don't think anybody ever, ever would mistake that he has great talent. And that's what we've got to do is make him feel very good about, about where he's going, make him feel at home, and then get him to work hard on his game. I think Kenny is going to know a lot about me and I'm going to know a lot about him. And I think what he's going to come into with me is he knows you're going to have to work hard to, uh, to, to make it work. And I know a lot about him is that obviously I'm going to give a lot of confidence to him and that he's going to be able to run our attack and, and not worry about making little mistakes while he's getting adjusted. And uh, that's what we'll try to work on very early on with him. Well, earlier this summer, Kuz, uh, in the off season, the Sonics made a big deal three-way deal. They traded Sean Kemp and acquired the services of Vin Baker. How's the deal worked out for the Sonics? Well, you know, we heard Rick Pitino say not too long ago that a trade is only effective if both teams uh, are satisfied with it. If I'm Seattle, however, I've got to love it. In my judgment, at least, Sean Kemp has been a work in progress throughout his career where uh, Baker is, is the complete finished product. I think he does a little bit of everything, and I think he loves it here in Seattle, as these numbers will indicate. All of them are up, uh, with the exception of rebounding just a bit, scoring a couple more here. Uh, but he does everything. That's what these numbers show you. He touches every base. Uh, in Milwaukee, they said uh, they questioned his consistency a little bit. I'll tell you, he's been consistent against the Celics over the years. He's destroyed us wherever he's been, Tate. Well, let's see what happens tonight, of course, but is this the season that Seattle can win a championship? Well, I think they're going to be in the final three, so to speak. Uh, in my judgment, at this point in the season, of course, injuries and a lot of other things play a role in the, uh, in the final winner, but we're talking about L.A., Chicago, and Seattle. I think they probably are going to go further in the playoffs than they ever have before for these reasons. They have the premier point guard, in the league in Gary Payton, who has done a wonderful job in orchestrating this uh, team over the past few years. Vin Baker that we just talked about gives them finally a consistent inside threat. George Carl, in my judgment, one of the better coaches in the league that's never perhaps gotten full recognition because of uh, what they've done or haven't done in the playoffs of late. 
and they have a strong defensive presence. What may hurt them in the playoffs to you is the lack of rebounding. They're down at the bottom in rebounding, and as you know, in the playoffs, you win it in the trenches, so that could work against them. Well, let's put your hat on now. Your old coach is at Coos, and uh, what do the Celts have to do tonight uh, to beat this ball club? You're going to give me this one. <laughs> <laughs> you saw the first game. they got to change those numbers, folks. They allowed Seattle to shoot it at 61%. Uh, they only shot it at 40%. Uh, they were down, I think, 29 points in the fourth quarter. They only shot five free throws. Seattle shot 45. All of those things have to change. They have to hope, frankly, Seattle's a much better team, that they let down. Uh, and if they let down, then they have to play their best in order to take advantage of that. But this is uh, the advantage the underdog has in this league. And the better teams like to play cat and mouse. After that game in Boston, you know, Seattle's not going to come out of here charged up. And by that I mean that sometimes they don't come out all game long and, and raise it to the next level because they want to stay in the game. I'm talking about the, the better players. And if you can keep it alive into the fourth quarter, you might be able to steal one. Steal one. I'd like that. Let's now get to the key matchup of the ball game, and that's brought to you by Chrysler Plymouth, New England. If you want to know what's new, we'll show you. The matchup involves Antoine Walker and Vin Baker. Antoine averaging almost 22 points a game and uh, 10 and a half rebounds a game and Vinnie Baker 20.4 points and eight rebounds a game for the Sonics. So we'll be back with the starting lineups in the opening tip right after this. UPN 38 Sports presents Boston Celtics basketball brought to you in part by the friendly New England Dodge dealers from cars to minivans to trucks. It's about change the new Dodge. By Fannie Mae Foundation, showing America a new way home. By Bank Boston, it's amazing what you can do. By the U.S. Postal Service, the official expedited courier of the Boston Celtics. By Gillette Sensor XL and the Gillette Series. Gillette, the best a man can get. And by Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. 